I played 200 days of Stardew Valley and collected everything. I set myself a total of 27 bounties, including some classic perfectionist goals, such as completing the shipping, fishing, cooking, crafting, mineral and artifact collections, becoming best friends with everyone, completing the monster slayer goals, collecting all 130 golden walnuts on Ginger Island, building the gold clock and all four obelisks, as well as getting my hands on all seven star drops. Sounds like a lot of work, right? And on top of those lofty goals, I set myself some more unusual bounties, such as getting to level 1000 in the Skull Caverns, fully upgrading my sword at the Volcano Forge, earning over 30 million gold, acquiring the elusive blue chicken, and placing a hilarious amount of kegs. This is a continuation of my 100 days as a miner video. If you haven't seen it, the link is in the description. Feel free to watch it and come back to watch this video after. This video was a beast of an effort to create, so I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, please drop a like and subscribe. Ah, day 101, and it's hard to believe we are back on this glorious farm. I put some gold onto Smelt and collected a bunch of jades from my crystallariums before heading off to give the wizard some essence of the void for his birthday, which he loved. I then decimated some stumps in the secret woods, and while I was there, I gave this bear some maple syrup, in return for which he gave me bear's knowledge, which makes worthless fruit three times more valuable. Unfortunately, three times worthless equals worthless. But thanks anyway, Mr. Bear. I then thought I might as well get right to work on the fishing collection. I caught the legendary glacier fish from the river in Cindersap Forest, as well as a pike from the lake. I commissioned my final house upgrade from Robin, gave Krobus a pumpkin, and then headed to the night market, where I bought this masterpiece from my guy Lupini. And then I fished in the submarine, hoping for the elusive octopus, but unfortunately couldn't manage to snag one. On day 102, I got my mayo and cheese on. I then sold a bunch of crap for the shipping collection, before heading to the beach where I bought 30 crab pots, an iridium rod, and a bunch of fish tanks from Big Willy. I placed all the crab pots in the ocean, hoping to snag a lobster, crab, and shrimp for the fishing collection. Next up, I tried to catch an octopus. And at risk of looking like a total idiot, I'd like to let you know that you cannot, in fact, catch an octopus in winter, unless you're in a submarine. In this particular instance, you may notice I was not in a submarine, and therefore I was wasting my time. I then had a vicious battle with several scorpion carps in the desert, but after like six fails, I finally caught one. I then took advantage of some evening fishing and caught a squid from the ocean and a midnight carp from the mountain lake. On day 103, I stole some kegs from this shed. By the way, the reason I wasn't bothering to collect this pumpkin juice is because I have nothing to refill the kegs with, so I figured I'd just leave it until spring. Anyway, I put the stolen kegs in the greenhouse so I can start producing some coffee with all the beans I've got growing here. I then went to the ocean and saw this green sea creature thingo and said, Oh, what's this guy? And guess what I did next? That's right. I tried to catch an octopus for three hours straight. After that glorious waste of time, I picked up my crab pot yield and in the process, accidentally gave Elliot some bait. He wasn't a fan. I then got my fishing in the mines done. I caught a stonefish, an ice pip, and a lava eel. I then collected about half the bug meat I needed for Big Willie's special order. I forgot to record day 104, but fortunately I was streaming. So I've got the VODs and you are blessed to see my beautiful noggin and this glorious taco hat. I went and fished for an octopus. And this is the moment that I finally realized I'd been reading the wiki wrong and that I couldn't actually catch one until summer. So I bailed from the cursed snow beach and had Clint crack a bunch of geodes for me. I donated a bunch to the museum and was rewarded with a chicken statue, which I placed over here next to old mate bear statue. I collected a bunch of oak resin and then interrupted Evelyn's staring contest with the Christmas tree to give her a birthday diamond. I caught the legendary mutant carp from the sewers and then hit up the mines to finish off Big Willie's bug meat quest. On day 105, I admired my new basement. I then harvested and replanted winter forageables and then bought 3000 rhubarb seeds from Sandy in preparation for spring. I then told Mr. Blockhead to get out of my way and headed into the casino. I bought the statue of Endless Fortune from this shady dude for 1 million gold, and that was my first bounty complete. I harvested a radish and two poppies from the greenhouse. I sold the radish and one poppy for shipping and kept the second poppy for the community center. I just need my fruit trees to start producing and I'll finally be able to finish my last few bundles. I bought heaps of explosive ammo and welcomed a newly hatched chicken, fried rice, and a newborn cow, mince. Day 106 was the first day that I didn't do like 400 things in one day. I simply harvested some coffee beans and kegged them. And while I was there, I noticed my fruit trees were finally done, but I needed two apples, so I left them for now. And then worked on farm design for the rest of the day, preparing for a big rhubarb crop come spring. On day 107, I harvested and replanted even more winter forageables before collecting some fruit. I then ran around giving away the fruit I just collected because I know pretty much everyone likes fruit. These ladies were especially grateful for some workout fruit. I also gave Leah the leaf eater a beloved birthday salad. I then went and completed the community center, donating the 
three apples, poppy, and pomegranate to the friendship bundle. The goal that eluded me in my first 100 days was finally complete. I witnessed George mistaking Linus for a raccoon, and then I hit up the mines and hunted down an ectoplasm for the wizard's special order that I picked up earlier in the day. On day 108, I grabbed a bunch of diamonds from the crystallariums. I destroyed some big boy stumps for hardwood and then gave the wizard his ectoplasm, completing the special order. I then received the Stardew Hero Trophy from Lewis, before witnessing Morris get yeeted off screen by Pierre's vicious right hook. I then went to the sewers and stumbled upon this fight between Krobus and this dwarf. Very violent cutscenes today, it's good stuff. I gave Krobus a pumpkin, bought 999 hay from money to make sure my animals don't die, and then asked Robin to add a couple of rooms to the house, and then commissioned yet another shed. I headed to the casino in the desert and got my gamble on. I somehow got a triple star drop and made 250,000 key coins, so I bought this alien rare crow, a top hat, and over 400 farm totems. I also bought this rare crow from the dwarf. After my usual chores on day 109, I wandered up to the train station where the wizard told me about his romantic history with the witch and he gave me a quest. I then headed to the Feast of the Winter Star and gave my secret Santa gift of a prismatic shard to Pierre. And I received a gift from Pam. Drum roll, please. It was a beer. Nice. I then headed to the sewers to retrieve the dark talisman for the wizard's quest he gave me earlier in the day. On day 110, I gave Clint a birthday emerald and retrieved Lewis's glorious purple shorts from Marnie's room. I then headed to the skull caverns to kill some iridium bats, hoping for a battery. I managed to get one, but I arrived approximately one second too late to Big Willie's shop, so I'll have to repair the boat tomorrow. I gave Elliot some cheese to console myself. Also, I got to see Big Willie with a giant clump of bug meat, so that was good. I went on a cheese gifting rampage at Gus's saloon. Turns out Sebastian doesn't like cheese, which explains why he's emo. I then returned home and did some work on farm design until I passed out. On day 111, I caught a slime jack for the fishing collection and donated the batteries, iridium bars, and hardwood for the boat repair. I then continued preparing the farm for spring. This included placing down my sprinkler layer and beginning to chop down these oak trees. On day 112, I finished removing the oak trees before asking Robin to move my sheds next to the greenhouse and buying about 10,000 wood and 7,000 stone. I also asked her to upgrade my shed. I then bought about 3,000 coal, 3,000 copper ore, 2,000 iron ore, and about 600 gold ore from Clint. The reason I bought a ridiculous amount of materials today is because tomorrow it's going to be year two. And in year two, all of these materials more than double in price. I then got my final farm prep done before spring. I left a little bit of space next to the pond and grandpa's shrine for future buildings. Day 113 and spring has sprung. The snow is melted and the pollen is drifting into my nostrils. I met Kent and he's a man of many words, so we had a riveting chat. And then I planted about 1000 deluxe speed grow rhubarbs, which will be spring's triple harvest. On day 114, I finished planting rhubarbs. These will be a double harvest. And that was about 1500 rhubarbs total. Some ancient fruit was ready in the greenhouse, so I chucked them in the seed makers and replaced a few of these coffee bushes. It was then time to head to Ginger Island. I met Leo the parrot child, collected a bunch of golden walnuts and unlocked access to the western area of the island where the farm is. I met Birdie and accepted her pirate's locket quest and collected a few more golden walnuts before passing out. On day 115, I sold a bunch of stuff for the shipping collection and then bought and planted a bunch of spring seeds to make sure I had everything I needed for shipping, as well as some ingredients on hand for cooking and crafting. I accepted Gus's famous omelette special order and delivered him 24 eggs. And I also did the runaround completing Birdie's quest, giving Kent the war photo, Gus the gourmet tomato salt, Sandy, the Stardew Valley Rose, George, the Advanced TV Remote, the Wizard, the Arctic Shard, Big Willy, the Wiggly Worm, and finally, I received the Pirate Locket, which I'll return to Birdie next chance I get. It's day 116 and you've got my beautiful noggin again, but no taco hat this time, apologies. I used the Dark Talisman to access this area to continue the Wizard's quest, caught a Void Salmon for the fishing collection and also the hidden bundle, then gave this goon a Void Mayonnaise to get him out of my way. I collected the magic ink from the Witch's Hut, gave it to the Wizard and unlocked his building options. I'll need these later. I went on an acid trip to the palm tree clouds with Emily and then gave Kent a bowl of cockroaches for his birthday. I went to Ginger Island and found a few more golden walnuts. This included failing a bunch of times at the memory game. It did play me some jingle bells at least. I returned the pirate locket to Birdie, earning the fairy dust recipe and five golden walnuts. I then unlocked the Ginger Island farmhouse and slept there for the first time. It was into the volcano on day 117. I collected some goodies on my way to the forge at the top, where I saw my good mates having a crispy lava spa day. I then caught a lionfish and blue discus for the fishing collection, as well as a couple of golden walnuts. On day 118, I cooked a few dishes for the cooking collection. I then harvested some garlic and planted a few more, because I realized I needed a bunch for cooking and crafting. I then gave old mate 
truck driver a rabbit's foot in return for which I received the special charm which gives a permanent luck boost. I then planted acorns across the entire desert as I no longer had any oak trees on my farm and I needed a new oak resin farm because I need more kegs. It's day 119 and my noggin is back again, this time with an orca hat on it. I gave Lewis a birthday gift, bought a rare seed from the traveling merchant and planted it in the greenhouse. I put down some lightning rods as it's gonna be storming tomorrow and I need batteries. And then I headed off to Ginger Island. This bird pooped out of Ruby so I put it on the Eastern pedestal and then head off to the volcano in search of golden walnuts. That night, lightning struck the old Jojamai building, unlocking the hidden bundle. On day 120, I planted some pineapples and tubers. I repaired this little bridge and rescued Professor Snail from his cave and donated a bunch of fossils to him in his research tent. I then panned in the river and found two lucky rings. That I would say is quite lucky. I combined these with my iridium rings at the forge. I found a bunch of golden walnuts all over the place. I also got some snazzy blue boots. On day 121, I harvested and planted a bunch of ancient fruit and then donated a void salmon and prismatic shard to the hidden bundle. I saw Emily rescue a bird that flew into her window. She claimed she was gonna help rehabilitate it, but I have a feeling she ate it. And then accepted Pam's special order for 12 vodkas. And I thought to myself, only 12? I planted the potatoes for her and then gave Krobus a pumpkin, bringing my friendship with him up to 10 hearts. I bought the void pendant from the desert trader for 200 void essence, gave it to Krobus and officially invited him to become my roomie. Bounty achieved. He said he'd move in in a few days. I finished the day by getting a start on some house design with a little fish display room down here. On day 122, I harvested and replanted a bunch of rhubarb and was pleased to finally have something to put into my kegs. And I also made 39 more kegs, expanding out the quarry kegs a little bit. Some Somewhere in there I remembered it was Vincent's birthday, but I arrived literally five seconds too late to give him his pink cake. I attempted to force feed it to him while he slept, but that didn't work for some reason. On day 123, I harvested and replanted some more rhubarbs, kegged Pam's potatoes, gave out a few gifts, and then headed to Ginger Island. I placed a sprinkler on the farm and planted wheat, melons, and garlic for the Gorman frog to admire once they've grown. On day 124, I cleared out the island farm in preparation for planting. I don't know why I didn't plant stuff here earlier as I need heaps of gold, so that was a bit of a misplay. Either way, this bird in the north pooped out an emerald for me. I spent the rest of the day in the volcano trying to find a mummified bat to donate to Professor Snail, but I had no luck. On day 125, I made a geode crusher for some reason. I returned to town and joined the villagers at the egg festival. I bought some strawberry seeds and a plush bunny. I then dominated some weakling children at the egg hunt and won myself a straw hat. Get on my level, Vincent. That's what you get for refusing to eat my pink cake. I bought a bunch of starfruit seeds, added some wildly inadequate lighting to my greenhouse, and noticed that Krobus and his weird dungeon had arrived so I gave him a welcome pumpkin. I rounded out the day doing a bit more work on the fish room. On day 126, I did some chores around the farm, placed some tappers on newly grown oak trees in the desert, bought 40 triple shot espressos and about 700 staircases from the desert trader and gave Haley a pink birthday cake. I then checked my monster goals and decided it would be wise to get some monster musk to make these easier. However, I didn't have enough bat wings, so I headed to the mines to kill some bats. Since I can't seem to find a mummified bat in the volcano to save my life, I shall murder living bats in spite. On day 127, I shipped a few things for the shipping collection, commissioned a fish pond from Robin, put Pam's 12 vodka in her fridge, completing her special order, and accepted a new special order from Demetrius to catch some river fish. I then headed to Ginger Island and prepared the farm for some star fruit and began planting, but ran out of time to fill up all the tiles. On day 128, I finished planting the star fruit and also chucked down some deluxe speed grow. I pickaxed a golden walnut from this bulging trunk, fished up three deep water walnuts, and then returned to my main farm to harvest and replant my double harvest rhubarbs. I also planted some more ancient fruit and put an ancient fruit wine in a cask to age as I need a silver quality one for the hidden bundle. It's day 129 and the greenhouse is full of ancient fruit. I put a spook fish in the fish pond because I need row for the shipping collection and it might as well be spook fish row. I then collected a bunch of rhubarb wine and refilled the kegs with more rhubarb. Also, it seems the quarry has overflowed kegs. Then I started working on Demetrius's river fish quest. On day 130, I finished fishing for Demetrius, earning me the farm computer crafting recipe. I also divvied out some cheese, commissioned another fish pond from Robin, gave Pam a birthday beer and headed to the mines for some monster the destruction. On day 131, I harvested and replanted rhubarbs yet again. I then put some final touches on my fish tank room and began work on this fireplace stone vibe kind of room that I don't know how to describe. It looks cozy though. On day 132, it was Shane's birthday, so I gave him a breakfast pizza. I then headed to Ginger
Ginger Island and unlock the resort and eastern part of the island. I showed the Gorman frog the melons, wheat and garlic. And I'm not sure what he made of them, but he said the word bombo a lot. And then he gave me 15 golden walnuts. He also threatened to tickle me. I then fished up a frog hat from Mr. Bombo's cave and also a Gorman frog statue from the pirate cave. I hoed up an ostrich egg and went to this pirate party. I said hello to Mario and Luigi and then played some darts, successfully winning all three golden walnuts. On day 133, I unlocked the island trader. He really is an interesting looking fella. I then fished in the dig site until I got myself a fossilized spine, which I donated to Professor Snail. I hit up the volcano for what must have been the 900th time and finally got the mummified bat. On day 134, I panned at the dig site until I got the fossilized tail and donated it to Professor Snail. I cracked open some artifact troves and golden coconuts and was rewarded with a fossilized skull, this glorious golden bike helmet and mango and banana saplings, which I planted in the greenhouse. I picked up Robin's special order for 80 hardwood, had an uplifting chat with Shane about the crushing weight of existence and then fertilized my little mahogany tree farm in the backwoods to ensure I get the hardwood I need to complete Robin's special order. On day 135, I was feeling generous. So I commissioned Robin to build Pam and Penny a house. And then after a bit of a struggle, fished up the legend on my second attempt. I returned to Ginger Island and donated the fossilized skull to Professor Snail, earning me six golden walnuts. I then headed to the volcano looking for dragon teeth. I realized I need 11, one for shipping and 10 for the island obelisk. I didn't find any though. I did find two mummified bats now that I don't need them. Unbelievable trolling from the volcano. On day 136, a bird on the west of the island pooped out an amethyst. So I used an ingenious process of elimination strategy to finish this little puzzle and earn myself five golden walnuts. I then headed to the flower dance where I bought the tub of flowers recipe as well as this rare crow. I asked Sebastian to dance with me, but he rejected me, to which I said, that's outrageous. So I danced with Shane instead. I was definitely best dressed with the bold frog hat choice. On day 137, I applied some monster musk and man, did I smell good. So spicy, a delight to the nostril. Smelling thus, I destroyed many monsters. I managed to complete both the skeleton and Dougie goals. I then began collecting rhubarb wine and refilling the kegs with yet another round of rhubarbs, but I ran out of time before I could finish. Day 138 began with collecting some oak resin and placing more tappers in the desert. I then collected my sweet gem berry from the greenhouse and gave it to Old Master Cannoli in the secret woods, securing my third star drop. I chopped a bunch of mahogany trees in the backwoods and completed Robin's hardwood special order and then witnessed Pam and Penny receiving their new home. Heartwarming stuff. I gave Pierre some fried calamari for his birthday and then finished off with the kegs, expanding my overflowing keg situation at the quarry even further. It's day 139 and Emily is having a girl's day at the beach for her birthday. I gave the girls a bunch of beach cheese and Emily a rabbit's foot. That is guaranteed to take the party to the next level. I caught a second Gorman frog statue, my frog tribe grows, and also a stingray for the fishing collection. Turns out I've already found over 100 golden walnuts because I was granted access to Mr. Key's room, where I picked up his quest to get 100 of every color item. I then headed to the forge at the top of the volcano and enchanted my fishing rod with master, which raises my fishing level to 11, and my pickaxe with swift, which makes it 33% faster. I returned home and began collecting collecting 100 various colored items, 100 orange copper ore, 100 yellow sap, 100 green jades, 100 purple void essence, and I bought 100 blue Joja Cola cans, one at a time from this vending machine, which was a lot of fun. And lastly, 100 red cherry bombs from the dwarf. On day 140, I bought about 1500 starfruit seeds in preparation for summer. I found Pierre's questionable reading material, bought about 1500 parsnip seeds, and then went to Ginger Island to turn in my hundreds of colorful items to Mr. Key, earning 35 key gems. While I was at Ginger Island, and Leo admitted to me that he wasn't actually a parrot and Big Willie appeared out of nowhere to say something sympathetic, which was nice, but also weird. Anyway, I went home and harvested the entire farm of rhubarbs and planted parsnips. These will die tomorrow, but they'll keep all the tiles tilled and watered so I can slap down the star fruit, no worries. It's day 141, summertime, baby. I destroyed the withered crops, planted a bunch of star fruit, got distracted halfway through the day and tended to my animals, which was a big mistake because I ran out of time and didn't manage to get down all my deluxe speed grow. Looks like only about half the farm is gonna be a triple harvest. That's another big misplay because I really do need all the money I can get. Hopefully it doesn't cost me. On day 142, I shipped some row for the shipping collection along with a refined quartz, apparently. I accepted a special order to collect and ship 100 ginger and then headed to Ginger Island where I harvested and replanted star fruit. I also picked up a quest from Mr. Key to get to level 100 in the skull cabins without eating anything. As we begin day 143, I want to introduce a saga that will span a long, long time. It's the snake vertebra saga. See, all I needed to complete Professor Snail's little museum was two snake vertebra. And these can be dug up from artifact spots in the Ginger Island farm area. But beginning today, I cannot find a flaming snake spine to save my life. 
Anyway, I at least found some ginger for my quest. I then cracked some geodes and artifact troves and gold and coconuts at Clint's and donated a few items to the museum. Then it was off to the skull caverns to do the quest. You might think not being able to eat anything would make this difficult, but I have a hell of a lot of staircases. I got to level 100 and completed the quest, earning 25 key gems. And I also completed a secret note quest to meet Mr. Key down here. He gave some weird wiggly snake milk. I'm not sure what possessed me to drink it, but what can I say? Purple milk makes me curious. I then caught the legendary crimson fish at the beach and a super cucumber, which I placed in this box behind the blacksmith to obtain my first secret statue. Hujimative. On day 144, I tried to catch an octopus. The good news is they actually spawn in summer. The bad news is I failed twice. They stopped spawning after 1 p.m. so I gave it up for the day. I stumbled upon Shane passed out in his bedroom surrounded by beer cans. I gave Jazz a pink cake for her birthday and then stumbled upon Shane passed down on the cliff surrounded by beer cans. I'm not sure how the big fella pulled off that drunken magic trick, but I respect it. I caught a Dorado for the fishing bundle and then collected a bunch of rhubarb wine and refilled the kegs with star fruit. On day 145, Shane came to apologize for his drunken shenanigans and promised me he was off to therapy. Good job, mate. I then went and vanquished the octopus once and for all. I caught a rainbow trout too, and that was it for summer fishing. I bought a rare seed and planted it because I need another sweet gem berry, this one for the shipping collection. I then collected 110 oak resin from the desert and made 110 kegs. I collected the rest of my rhubarb wine, refilling the kegs with star fruit as I went, and then expanded out my quarry overflow even further, but decided I'd better stop here to avoid blocking the adventurer's guild. I put the rest of the kegs in a shed instead. I sold a bunch of rhubarb wine and hit 10 million total gold earned overnight. On day 146, I bought a bunch of summer seeds and then visited Carolyn's sunroom. And I'm not sure what tea leaves she's using, but I don't think there's supposed to be a dancing gremlin in your tea. I then featured in these bozos Joja Cola ad, credited as extra in background. I put an earth crystal in a crystallarium as I need 10 to build the mountain obelisk. I grabbed a bunch of clams as I need 10 for the beach obelisk. And I bought a bunch of cactus seeds as I need 10 for the desert obelisk. I planted some beets and red cabbage on the island farm. And I also used the power of the almighty wiki to find a few golden walnuts I'd missed. I didn't find any snake spines though. Flaming snake spines. It's day 147 and guess what? No artifact spots. I went to the volcano to farm some dragon teeth and managed to find one. I then hit up the desert and bought about 350 more staircases. I made 10 garden pots and placed them in my house to grow some cactus fruit. And I put down these sprinklers next to them, but I'm pretty sure sprinklers don't work in the house. We'll see tomorrow, I guess. I collected a few clams from crab pots and then hit up the mines. I wanted a strange bun which drops from shadow brutes at a 4% chance and I managed to get one on literally my second kill. Day 147 148 confirmed the failure of my house sprinkler idea. So I'll just have to manually water these cacti whenever I remember. I gave Krobus a diamond. I was trying to make this a daily habit because I need 12 and a half hearts of friendship to earn a star drop. I collected my silver ancient fruit wine and donated it along with five gold ancient fruit and some dino mayo to complete the hidden bundle. Bounty achieved. I put the strange bun I got yesterday in Vincent's toy box and stole his favorite toy for Ogamon. And I put some duck mayonnaise in this box in the saloon and got pinky lemon. That's all three secret statues another bounty achieved. I visited Robin and she taught me how to make a drum block and a flute block. I made a few flute blocks as I'll need these on Ginger Island. I picked up Linus's trash cleanup special order and then made some tea saplings and planted them right next to my house. I caught a sturgeon from the mountain lake and after evicting the spook fish, plopped it in the fish pond. I bought a bunch more star fruit seeds, went and killed some squid kids to get squid ink, yoinked the midnight carp from my fish tank and then cooked some seafoam pudding which gives plus four fishing. This is gonna be essential for completing one of my bounties tomorrow. On day one, 49, I stood in some green sludge and ate sea foam pudding, bringing my total fishing level up to 15 so that I could catch the Iridium Crobus statue. Bounty complete. I then visited Shane and he showed me his blue chickens, which means I can now get blue chickens. I'll have to get one tomorrow though, because it's Tuesday and Marnie is off canoodling with Lewis. Thanks to secret note 19, I then found the solid gold Lewis statue. A beautiful testament to Lewis's vanity and yet another bounty complete for me. I then hit up Ginger Island and since it was raining, the mermaid was chilling on her rock. I placed down my flute blocks and played her little song, earning me five golden walnuts. I found an unprecedented two artifact spots on the west of the island, but as you'd expect, no snake spines. I accepted the 500 key fruit quest, but I don't really have much room to plant, so this one is gonna be a challenge. I also bought a pair of Junimo chests. These link together, so they're super handy. I placed one at the Ginger Island farmhouse, and I'll place the other back home. To round out the day, I managed to farm two more dragon teeth. On day 150, I placed down my Junimo chest and added golden Lewis to the statue line, and then I 
harvested and replanted the first of my starfruit triple harvest. I also bought a blue chicken and named it Smurf, another bounty complete. I then got to work fishing up some trash for Linus's special order. On day 151, I finished collecting trash and placed them in this box at the train station. It's just as well there was a little question mark because there are a lot of trees in the way. Which maniac planted these? I then planned to go to Ginger Island, but I was ambushed at the beach by all these hooligans causing a ruckus. This unfortunately wasted most of my day, but at least this purple idiot liked the cheese I put in the enormous soup. I finished off the day with some dust sprite destruction in the mines. Day 152 started with a very colorful gem shed. How lovely. I then crafted 23 more kegs and went on a wine collecting rampage. I also had the pleasure of witnessing Linus having a good old soak in the lake. I finished the day chopping down some trees as I need more wood because I want more kegs. On day 153, I watered my cactus. Can you believe I've actually been remembering to water these? I then tended to my animals. It's been so long, the fences have all given up on life. I didn't fix the fences though because I couldn't be bothered. I collected about 100 oak resin from the desert, gave Alex a big breakfast for his birthday, and grabbed a couple of rainbow shells on my way to Ginger Island. I harvested and replanted a bunch of star fruit. I also planted some key fruit and left space to plant more. I shipped the red cabbage, beet, and rainbow shell for the shipping completion, and then hit up the volcano in search of dragon's teeth, but yet again didn't find any. On day 154, I planted a few more key seeds, grabbed some ginger as I was still working on the 100 ginger special order, and then hit up the volcano but couldn't find a single dragon tooth. I did at least manage to complete the fire sprite monster slaying goal. I returned to the farm and gave Krobus a gift, bringing our friendship up to 12 and a half hearts and earning my fourth star drop. On day 155, I harvested and replanted a bunch more star fruit and then took stock of my artifact and mineral collections. Turns out all these artifacts can be found from artifact spots. Can you believe that? In fact, I actually found one of them immediately. I then noticed that the movie theater had materialized out of nowhere. So I watched this movie for some reason. I don't know what it was about, but it involved a cowboy shooting a water tower. I then went on a giant geo destruction rampage. I just need one dolomite. And even though I broke over 70 omni geodes, I didn't get it. I accepted Pierre's special order for 25 of quality veggies and planted some more key seeds on Ginger Island and accepted Mr. Key's quest to give 50 loved gifts. I then had yet another failure looking for dragon teeth in the volcano and visited this weirdo to buy a couple of recipes. On day 156, I harvested the first of my key fruit and chucked them in seed makers and then replanted a bunch more. I then failed yet again to find any flaming dragon teeth, so I headed back home, harvested my 10 cactus fruit and filled my bags with loved gifts. I wandered around bestowing my gifts on people and then hit up the mines to get another squid ink to ship. On day 157, I wandered the lands bandying about with loved gifts and managed to get up to about 30 out of 50 for the quest. While doing this, I got spammed with many cutscenes at multiple homes, but I skipped them all because I couldn't be bothered with all the drama. I harvested and replanted a bunch of key fruit and hit up the volcano mines where I finally found another dragon tooth. I only need one more for the obelisk. But then I realized I also need 10 bananas and my banana tree isn't fully grown yet. So I was sad. On day 158, I finished off Mr. Key's loved gifts quest, earning 40 key gems. Some of my friendships are actually looking kind of healthy. I did the whole key fruit harvest and replant routine as well as the find zero snake vertebra routine and then went to the volcano and finally got my 10th dragon tooth. I then hit up the mines to grind out some more slime and dust sprite kills. Day 159 was harvest day, so I collected a bunch of star fruit, replanting as I went. I also headed to Pierre's to turn in 25 gold star fruit, but on my way there, I realized the quest specified vegetables. Whoops, I guess I'm failing this one. I collected about 1,000 wine and refilled all the kegs with star fruit. I also placed a bunch more kegs. I'm onto my third big shed now, and I earned almost 3 million gold overnight. On day 160, I tended to my animals and then moved all my lightning rods, creating a makeshift fence. I then went and bought earth, water, and desert obelisks and place them next to the pond. I also built two mini obelisks so that I can teleport straight from the farmhouse to the big obelisks. I then went to Ginger Island and went nuts with the key fruit. I managed to plant about 230. On day 161, I was determined to succeed at this key fruit quest. So I destroyed my path and placed more sprinklers. I even planted some key fruit over here in these random spots. I also found time in there to collect some sturgeon roe, which I chucked in a preserves jar to turn into caviar. On day 162, I harvested and replanted star fruit on the Ginger Island farm, accepted Mr. Key's Junimo cart quest, which was a big mistake, and then poured it home to find my first banana and mango. I shipped the mango, but hung onto the banana because I want my island obelisk ASAP. I 
hit up the Shrine of Uncertainty in the sewers and asked for a farming respec because I want to get agriculturalists to speed up my crop growth. You'll see why over the next few days. I accepted this special order for tropical fish and then attempted to get 50,000 points in Junimo Kart Endless Mode. Remember how I said this quest was a mistake? Yeah, I really suck at this. I tried a few times and then rage quit. I jumped on the crane game at the movie theater and won a few sweet prizes. To round out the day, I applied a monster musk and killed a bunch of dust sprites and slimes. On day 163, I was up to my key fruit shenanigans again. I made a bunch more seed makers cause six were too slow and I found that my change of perk had paid off. These freshly planted key fruit will be ready in two days instead of three, which made me pretty confident that I'd get 500 in time. I then fished up tropical fish for Big Willy's special order. I caught the five lionfish and blue discus, but only three stingrays as I ran out of time. I got a third Gorman frog statue though. On day 164, I continued with even more key fruit shenanigans, caught my last two stingrays, and I also caught yet another Gorman frog statue. I then harvested ancient fruit, plus the sweet gem berry, which I immediately shipped. I gave Big Willy a birthday diamond, which I don't have footage for because it froze for some reason, and then I headed to the skull caverns. I mainly needed pepper rex kills for monster slaying goals and omni geodes to help complete the museum. On day 165, my caviar was ready, so I shipped it and headed off to Ginger Island where I did my final planting of key fruit so that I should have the 500 I need in two days. I then headed to the mines with some monster musk and finally got the dust sprite goal, earning myself the extremely handy burglar ring. On day 166, I forgot to record, but all I did was collect over 1000 star fruit wine and refill all my kegs. I hung onto the wine for now because I'm not gonna sell it until I've switched back to the artisan perk, which makes it worth 40% more. I also placed about 85 more kegs, Almost filling up my third shed. On day 167, I resorted to theft because I realized my tea saplings won't yield any leaves this summer. And Carolyn won't mind, right? I stole one of these yesterday as well, by the way. One was shipped and the other I put in this keg to make green tea. I then harvested all my key fruit, replanting star fruit seeds as I went. I shipped all the key fruit, completing the quest and earning myself 100 key gems. I then did the usual can't find artifacts to save my life routine. I then went and took out my rage on slimes in the mines. Look how much loot I was getting with the burglar ring on. Two squires helmets at once, how medieval. On day 168, I noticed my tea bushes were ready. So it turns out I didn't need to resort to thievery after all. I then had my final star fruit harvest of summer. I hit up the mines with monster musk yet again and completed both the slime and void spirit goals. I decided to hit up the skull caverns while my monster musk was still active and see if I could find some pepper rexes as that was now the only monster goal I had left to complete. I managed to find a prehistoric level so I killed quite a few. The day ended with the most useless fairy visit ever. What a marvelous end to the summer. Fall had fell on day 169 and therefore it was autumn. So I planted a whole lot of pumpkins. I bought about 4,500 pumpkin seeds from Pierre, which should last me all three fall harvests. You may recall I still had the agriculturalist perk. That means this pumpkin crop will grow one day faster, allowing me to get my planting done over two days and still get my triple harvest in. I only wish I'd thought to do this in spring and summer. On day 170, I planted a few of each fall crop in this area, just in case I need any of them for cooking. I then finished off planting a handful of pumpkin and put down deluxe speed grow across the entire farm. Some pigs got in the way though. Someone should really build a fence around their barn. I then headed into town and saw these star-crossed lovers having a quarrel. I accepted this albacore special order and went to catch some from the ocean. On my way there, I witnessed the weirdest cutscene ever. Krobus was dancing with the kraken and yeah, I caught six of the 10 albacore I needed. On day 171, I picked my 10th banana. And you know what that means? I grabbed my 10 dragon teeth and iridium bars and got myself the island obelisk. I am finally no longer dependent on Big Willy's boat to get to Ginger Island. Also, that's all four obelisks and another bounty complete. I then caught a salmon and the angler legendary fish, which completed my fishing collection. Yet another bounty complete. I then teleported to Ginger Island, very convenient, and accepted Mr. Key's quest to collect four prismatic shards. I also bought three galaxy souls from Mr. Key's shop. I then used all three of these on my galaxy sword to fully upgrade it into the infinity blade. I also added 30% damage onto it with three rubies. And finally, I put the bug killer enchantment on it. This was a fully upgraded sword and my third completed bounty for the day. I also enchanted my ax with swiftness and my hoe with archeologist. I returned to the ocean and caught the four remaining albacores for the special order and then finished the day crafting everything I could with the materials I had on hand. I must've crafted 30 or 40 things taking a huge chunk out of the crafting completion. I also re-specialized into artisan overnight, 
On day 172, I put the frog hat on Doofle Dingus and received a star drop from Willy in the mail as a reward for completing the fishing bundle. I then hit up Ginger Island and you won't believe this, but I actually found a snake vertebra. This is not a drill, we have acquired the spine of a snake. I need one more though, so don't get too excited. I then had a peek at how my perfection stats were tracking. All of yesterday's crafting got me up to 71% recipes made. Very nice. I tested my sword out on these tiger slimes. It does more than double the damage now. And I gave a banana to this big fella and earned myself three golden walnuts. On day 173, I collected 3.5 million gold worth of star fruit and ancient fruit wine. I also gave Elliot a birthday lobster and anyone else I locked eyes with got some cheese. I crafted eight more oil makers since I had almost 500 truffles to process. I placed four prismatic shards in Mr. Key's box, earning 40 key gems. Day 174 was a best luck day, so I decided it was finally time to reach level 1000 in the Skull Caverns. It was time to attempt my most ridiculous bounty yet. Basically, it was staircases galore. I found two prehistoric levels, which I paused briefly on to slay dinosaurs, completing the Pepper Rex Monster Slayer goal, which made me the Monster Slayer hero. Bounty complete. From then on, it was almost 900 more levels of staircase spam. It took me 36 minutes. I think I went into a coma at one point, I was so bored, but I did it. I got to floor 1000 at 750 p.m. and that was yet another bounty complete. And now that I'd made it, I figured I'd better see how much loot I could get my hands on. Look at the iridium node density down here. It's very, very spicy. Also, I saw some red demon bats. I came away with 1,042 iridium ore, 20 prismatic shards, 330 gold ore, 221 iron ore, and 168 copper ore, plus a bunch of other random goodies. After a very unusual day yesterday, I came back to reality with some chores on day 175. I also bought 3,000 hay from Marnie because it's probably best to not let my animals starve. I harvested and replanted some star fruit on Ginger Island, collected this stone Junimo from behind the community center to add to the statue lineup and did some work on interior design. On day 176, I smashed a whole bunch of geodes, but still didn't find the one mineral I need. I accepted Pierre's 25 gold vegetable quest for the second time, as this time I'll have pumpkins to give him. I also accepted Mr. Key's quest to catch the legendary fish relatives. And so I went fishing. I caught Miss Angler, Legend the Second, Glacier Fish Jr., and the Radioactive Carp, but I ran out of time attempting to catch the Son of Crimson Fish. On day 177, I finished off the quest, earning 20 key gems. I placed all 10 legendary fish in my fish tanks and also spiced up the tanks with some seaweed and coral. I then went on a rampage crafting items again. I then realized I needed yet another dragon tooth to craft the island totem, so I headed to the volcano to try and find one, and of course I didn't. On day 178, I did my weekly ancient fruit harvest and harvested and replanted about 1500 pumpkins. I also harvested this random mix of crops I'd planted and shipped an artichoke for the shipping completion. I went to the volcano again and this time managed to find a dragon tooth, so I crafted an island totem. I picked up the deluxe fertilizer recipe from Mr. Key room and crafted that too. And I cooked a few dishes with all the random ingredients I had on hand. On day 179, I gave Pierre his 25 golden pumpkins, completing the special order. And then I hit up the Skull Caverns, as it's always nice to refill my mining chest. And I also needed Omni Geos towards completing the museum. That strange noise awoke me on day 180, and I found this strange capsule incubating a creature of some kind. I plonked it down here to let it pulsate away. I collected my wine and refilled my kegs with star fruit, ancient fruit, and pumpkins, and decided tonight would be the night to sell all the goods I'd accumulated, including over 3,000 star fruit wine. I earned so much gold that the income screen broke. I'm not sure how much it was exactly, but it was over 10 million. On day 181, I cracked 40 more geodes and still no dolomite. I'd also made a habit of checking artifact spots around town and even with my archaeologist enchantment on my hoe, I was yet to find any of the artifacts I needed. I gave Emily Abigail's birthday amethyst by accident because I don't know the difference between blue and purple, and so Abigail had to settle with birthday cheese. I then spent the fortune I'd earned overnight and bought myself a gold clock, costing 10 million gold. Bounty complete. I finally got the golden scythe from the quarry too. I guess it was a gold-themed day. I visited Old Mate Gill and got this knight's helm for completing the monster slayer goals, and I also bought about 1,000 explosive ammo. I spent the evening collecting more Omni Geodes in the Skull Caverns. On day 182, I went to the Skull Caverns to farm Geodes again, and then had the idea that perhaps the Volcano would be a better choice because I'd also have the chance to pick up another Ostrich Egg from a chest. Turns out you get about zero Omni Geodes in the Volcano, and I had no luck with the Ostrich Egg, as they can only be found in rare chests, and I found three common chests. On day 183, I noticed the creature in the strange capsule had disappeared. No idea where it went, but I can only assume it lurks and watches me while I sleep. I gave Sandy a birthday daffodil, 
accepted Mr. Key's quest to do the hard mode of the mines and accepted Gunther's special order to collect 100 bone fragments. I once again broke a bunch of Omni Geodes and once again had no luck. I then hit up the funky alternative version of the mines and got down to level 70, collecting a good chunk of radioactive ore on the way. On day 184, I shipped one radioactive ore and put a bunch on to smelt. My Ginger Island starfruit harvest was ready, but I didn't urgently need gold, so I honestly couldn't be bothered harvesting. I hit up the festival in town and absolutely dominated at this target shooting game. Look at me go. I then indulged in some healthy gambling. I bought a star drop as well as this Howl's Moving Castle inspired rare crow and a fedora, which I popped on my head. I entered the produce competition with some cheese encased ice cream, but I somehow only came second, so clearly it was rigged. I spent the evening in the mines again and reached level 120, completing Mr. Key's quest. On day 185, I collected my radioactive bars and shipped one. I killed skeletons and collected all the bone fragments I needed and dropped these off at the museum, completing Gunther's special order. I then bought the four crafting recipes from Mr. Key that require radioactive ore or bars and bought a carved brazier recipe from Robin. I crafted all five of these items and also a tub of flowers because thankfully I had all four flower seeds stored in a chest. I decided these look quite nice, so I put a few around the farm. On day 186, I harvested all the star fruit on Ginger Island, and because by this point I was absolutely sick of looking for a second snake spine every day, I decided I needed to improve my chances of getting one by making more space for artifact spots to spawn. So I tore everything down. It hurt to destroy all these fertilized spots, but I needed that spine. I bought the skull brazier recipe from Robin, gave Marnie a birthday diamond, and then crafted a skull brazier plus a bone mill, the recipe for which Gunther had sent me as a reward for giving him the 100 bone fragments. I also realized that tubs of flowers don't actually flower in full, so I guess I just have empty barrels lying around now. On day 187, I got a snake skull from an artifact spot. I need your spine, not your skull, you silly dead snake. I harvested and replanted the entire farm of pumpkins, and I finally showed mercy on my pigs and picked up the 3,000 truffles they dug up for me. I then began collecting wine and juice from my kegs. On day 188, I forgot to record. What a classic. I finished up with the kegs and then went hunting for a skeletal hand. I killed haunted skulls on an infested level in the mine and found one pretty quick. I don't know how a skull drops a hand bone, but I respect it. On day 189, I gave Robin some birthday spaghetti, and then it was time to make use of my geodes and artifact troves. By this point, I was absolutely sick of never finding the flaming items I needed, so I used a handy tool called the Stardew Predictor. Basically, the predictor gives you a giant list. Using this, you can make sure you open the right geodes in the right order to get the exact items you need. Long story short, I got the Elvish Jewelry, Ancient Amphora, Arrowhead, Ornamental Fan, Dwarf Gadget, which I need for crafting, and Dolomite, completing both the mineral and artifact collections. I donated them all to the museum, but my museum wasn't complete. Turns out I was missing three items. My collections were done, so I'd pick these up at some point, but I must have sold them accidentally. So I quickly crafted a farm computer and then spent the rest of the day farming a bunch more Omni Geodes. On day 190, I picked up Mr. Key's quest for hard mode skull caverns. I then went to Robin's to buy the marble brazier recipe, and then I headed to Clint's for some more predictor shenanigans. I got the bone flute, ancient sword, and obsidian, and finally finished off the museum, which awarded me with my seventh and final star drop. Two bounties completed at once. Now, I know some of you may find the use of the Stardew Predictor a little bit dodgy, and I would like to say, I don't care. I then picked up Clint's special order to kill 50 bats. I helped Penny clean up, which outraged Pam. I gave Penny cheese as consolation. I then helped George get a book from the top shelf, which inspired him to tell the story of that time he blew up his legs. I gave him cheese as consolation. I then eavesdropped on Abigail and Caroline having a fight, so I gave them both cheese as a consolation. I then hid in a bush as Abigail played her flute in the rain. I crafted some marble braziers and then headed to the mines with Monster Musk, completing Clint's 50 bat special order. On day 191, the unthinkable happened. A feat believed impossible, a triumph. I found my second snake vertebra. I completed Professor Snail's little archeological museum and he gave me the ostrich incubator recipe and three golden walnuts in return. That was all 130 golden walnuts. I could have also incubated my ostrich egg to get my an ostrich, which was one of my bounties. But I also needed to ship an ostrich egg for shipping completion. So I didn't want to do that just yet. And so I looked for an ostrich egg in the volcano again, but had no luck. I then did Mr. Key's quest to get to level 100 in hard mode skull cabins. I discovered you can get galaxy souls here, and I was greatly terrified by these extreme long boys. But I got to level 100 earning 40 key gems. I then crafted the ostrich incubator and spent some time decorating this TV area of my house. I began day 192 by finishing off the TV room 
Instagram. I then decided I hadn't quite achieved my place a hilarious amount of kegs goal. So I bought a whole bunch of wood from Robert. While I was there, I deleted this crib because after a long discussion with Krobus, we decided we didn't want any kids. I then made a whole bunch of kegs and began filling the backwards area. I gave George a birthday prismatic shard and finished the day with some work on this library sitting room area. On day 193, I bought a bunch more wood from Robin and some iron ore from Clint so that I could finish off my backwards keg project. I think this combined with the three sheds, cave, quarry, bus stop, road, and tunnel officially qualifies as a hilarious amount of kegs. I then tried my luck finding an ostrich egg again, but had no success. And then I began working on my bedroom area. I really got to do something about these cacti. I'm not sure it's the vibe I'm going for. On day 194, I tried yet again for an ostrich egg and had no luck yet again. On floor nine, I actually got a rare chest for once, but as I said, no egg. Another goal I had was to get the Wombus statue from the crane machine. But for whatever reason, I never had the Wombus movie show at the theater, so I guess I'll be failing that bounty. I went to Robin's and tried to put the bedroom wall back in, but there were cacti in the way, so I asked her to open shortcuts around town instead. I returned home and destroyed the offending cacti, and then attempted to return to Robin and reinstate the wall, but as I arrived, she wandered off. Since when do you close at four, Robin, you traitor? Here, have some cheese. I did some work on the bedroom regardless. On day 195, I worked on the final touches to the bedroom, asked Robin to put the wall back in, and then did some work on the dining area. At 10 p.m., I attended Spirit's Eve, where I was able to purchase the final rare crow I needed, as well as the recipe for jack-o'-lantern. Even though Harvey seemed stumped as he stared at this hedge, I was able to conquer the trials of the maze and retrieve this golden pumpkin. On day 196, I crafted the deluxe scarecrow, a recipe earned by collecting all eight rare crows. I had no idea the radius of effect these things had was so massive. Another bounty complete. I then crafted a jack-o'-lantern, and I had thought it was my final item to craft, but there was no achievement, no fanfare. So I headed to Mr. Key's perfection tracker and saw that I was only at 97%. I started to panic because I had no idea which items I was missing until I discovered this show advanced crafting info. This let me know how many of each item I had crafted. So I figured out that I needed to make a hardwood fence, beach totem and stump brazier. I made all three and hit 100% crafting. Another bounty collected. I then picked all these pumpkins and collected a bunch of wine and juice, refilling the kegs with mostly pumpkins as I went. I also discovered Robin was hard at work here building a shortcut. You know what? It would be a shame if there were 3,000 kegs in the way of Robin's new shortcut. On day 197, and as is now tradition, I forgot to record the first of winter. All I did was ship the ostrich egg, because at this point it was impossible for me to get an ostrich in time, and then I continued designing the house for the rest of the day. Here's a little tour. I've got Skelly on welcome duty, I made a pretty fridge area because I'm addicted to fridge space, and I even spruced up Krobus's weird dungeon area. I put in little floor dividers and fixed up the floors too. On day 198, my ostrich egg had officially shipped and my shipping collection was complete. Another bounty collected. Look at all these completed collections. And then there's cooking. I'd also sold a bunch overnight, so my total gold earned had officially cleared 30 million. Another bounty collected. I decorated downstairs where my strategy was to place a billion plants. I also filled the casks with cheese for good measure. My house was now fully decorated and looking great. Another bounty collected. I then went to the movies hoping to get some cool stuff from the crane game, but this buffhead was hogging it. So I watched this snowy movie about the nutritional benefits of a star drop. I then tried to force feed Lewis some cheese while he was asleep. And I found Abigail with a big chonky sword in the graveyard, so that was, uh, nice. I picked up this special order to get 1000 wood for Robin and got to chopping. On day 199, I woke up overwhelmed at how glorious my house looks. I gave Linus a birthday coconut, finished Robin's wood special order, replanted the trees, and then cooked every dish I had ingredients for. I think I cooked about 20 or so dishes and my cooking collection was looking somewhat more respectable. I also placed some freshwater crab pots, hoping for periwinkles and snails so I can cook a couple more things tomorrow. On day 200, Leah gave me a statue called How I Feel About Floydson. Judge by the look of it, she must feel that I am a knot. I gave it pride of place next to the fire so that I can use it as firewood in a pinch. I collected a snail from my crab pots, bought a bunch of fridges from Robin, and then returned home to place my fridges and cook escargot. Delicious. Eating snails wasn't quite enough to get my cooking bounty completed though, as I've now officially run out of time. Speaking of failures, unfortunately I had only managed to get to max friendship with about 30% of the villagers, so that was another bounty left uncollected. I went on a key gem spending spree and bought Pierre's lost stock list, the horse flute and the key to the Town. I flute summoned my horse and rode to Pierre's, and thanks to the key to the town, I could access his house even though it was after 10 pm. Pierre was standing here like a weirdo, so I gave him his stock list, which means he'll sell all seeds all year round from now on. This will be handy to complete the cooking collection in the 300 days video. And just like that, the 200 days were over. 
Of the 27 bounties I'd set for myself, I completed 23. On my road to perfection, I've come a very long way. As you can see, I'm at 88%, with a fair bit of work to do on my friendships and cooking, but every other category completed. A pretty successful 200 days if you ask me. Check out this challenge to see how deep I could get on my first day in the mines. Cheers.